Hello. Uh, we're going to now start with section 5.3, which deals with the binomial distribution. Uh, to start, let's take a look at an example. So we assume that a coin is flipped 10 times. Compute the probability that a head comes up exactly 5 times. Now we could use uh, some of the probability uh, rules that we've learned previously. However, um, it would become a little complicated to do so. Uh, it would take, um, can be done, but just takes a little bit of extra work. It turns out that this type of problem is what's called a binomial probability problem. We can use what's called the binomial distribution in a nice compact formula to easily compute the probability. Now in order for us to be able to use this formula, uh, there's some rules that need to be uh, met. So here, let's mention these rules. So these are our rules for, uh, in order for a problem to be considered a binomial probability distribution experiment. So first of all, there has to be a fixed number of trials. Let's go back to our problem here. We're flipping the coin 10 times so definitely there's a fixed number of trials where uh, there's 10 trials. Second rule, there has to be two outcomes per trial. In our example, we do have two outcomes, heads or tails. Third rule, the trials are independent of each other. Well, if we're flipping a coin, if we get tails on the second toss, uh, um, and this is just a standard coin, that should have no impact on getting tails on the fifth toss or the eighth toss. Thus, uh, this experiment here or this problem is independent. The outcomes are independent of each other. And the probability of success remains the same per trial. Well, each time you flip a coin, the probability of getting heads is, is one half each time you flip the coin. So every time we flip the coin 10 times, that probability of success remains the same. So that's going to lead into our compact formula that we mentioned. So the formula for the binomial distribution is P of X. Now, just let me point out that P of X does not mean P times X. It's a type of mathematical notation mean that, that informs us every time we have a value for X, we're going to replace it throughout the equation. Um, and the, let me just go down a little further just to, further highlight this. Well, the actual equation, we have our combination from 4, 4. N is the number of trials. X is the number of successes. And we're using our combination rule. So we're looking at how many different successes can we have in N trials times P is your probability of success. And we want X number of those successes. Q, that's the probability of failure. And we need to take our total amount, N, and subtract the number of successes, X. That leaves us with the number of failures. So Q to the N minus X power. We multiply all of these values together. And um, we will compute our binomial probability distribution formula. I just want to point out that Q, remember, is always 1 minus P. So if we take a look, let's go back to our problem here. Let's work this out. So we want to have five successes. We have 10 trials. We're going to take a combination. Let me kind of enlarge the C to make sure it looks like an actual combination and we want five successes. <clears throat> Times the probability of success, in other words, the probability uh, of getting heads is 0.5. So that's not going to change. So it's 0.5 and we want five of those. So it's 0.5 to the fifth power. The probability of failure, meaning 
That's just the probability of getting tails. Well, that's also 0.5. And that's also going to be raised to the fifth power because, remember, we're flipping the coin ten times. We want five successes, thus we have to have five failures. And what I typically do to calculate this, and I'll make a separate video to show people how to compute uh, this type of uh, problem, I just type it all directly into the calculator. Okay, so I do 10C5 times 0.5 to the fifth times 0.5 to the fifth, and we get our, our answer, which is 0.246. So that's roughly about 25% chance of getting five heads when you flip a coin 10 times. Okay. Let's look at some of the other problems now. Um, so we have a couple of other problems for people to try. Uh, let's see. How about if we, let me take a look at another example here. I'll work out this example, number 12. It says, and I'll just go ahead and copy this over because we're going to be using this formula here. It says the chance that a student passes a math course is 78%. If um, nine students are selected at random, find the probability that exactly four pass the math class. Well, n, that's our number of trials. There's nine students. The probability that a student will pass the class is 0.78. Probability that the student will not pass the class is 1 minus 0.78 and that's going to give us 0.22 and we want to know what's the chance that four of them pass the course. Well it's a binomial distribution problem there's a fixed number of trials probability of success that the, the outcomes are there's two outcomes either they pass or not do not pass, and the probability of success remains the same per trial. So we have, let's remember, uh, n is 9. So we want four successes. Our probability of success is 0.78, and we want four of those. And then this is 0.22. And 9, what's 9 minus 4? 5. So we just punch this into our formula to get our answer. And that should be 0 0.024, and that's going to be our answer. Now, it turns out we, we will have to use um, other types of uh, translations for different types of problems, because sometimes we have to perform more than one calculation. So let's kind of review that process. So whenever they ask us to compute exactly x successes, x is just equal to some number. But now if they use uh, they turn, they use different language here, let's say they say at least x successes, that means um, x or more. So we have to um, add all the values from x up to n. If it says more than x successes, that means we don't include x, we just keep adding uh, from the number after x all the way to n. And most x successes means x is less than or equal to some number. So x all the way down to 0, we add up all those probabilities together. We'll first compute and then add. x is less than x, that means we go below x and compute all the probabilities and add all of those together. So we're going to take a look at one of these examples. 
Um, let's look at this example here first. So it says, the chance that a customer will purchase water at the grocery store is 9%. If seven customers are selected, use the binomial distribution to compute the following probabilities. Exactly three will purchase water. Well, N is seven, there's seven customers. X is three, three successes, three people purchase water. P is 0.09. Q is 1 minus 0 0.09, which is 0.91. We plug this into our formula. 7 people, 3 by water. So 7C3, 0 0.09 to the third times 0 0.91 to the 7 minus 3 fourth power. 7C3 is 35. And I, like I said, I just type all this into the calculator. Final answer, 0 0.017. Now, what if it asks for at most three will purchase water? At most three means three or less. So we have to actually perform this calculation for three, two, one, and zero. So we're going to plug x equal to three, two, one, and zero into our formula. And so for three, it's we already did the work. It's 0 0.017. We did it up here. For two, we have 7c2 times 0 0.09 squared. Now remember, this power will change. As this power diminishes, this power increases. Because when you add the two powers together, it should equal 7 in this example. So 0 0.09 squared times 0 0.91 to the fifth, 0 0.106, 0 0.09, because there we want one person to buy the water to the one times 0 0.91 to the six, 0.358, and finally we want no one to purchase the water um, that's going to give us 0.517. We add each of these probabilities together. That's our answer. So the probability that most three will purchase water is 0.998. Right. So at most three, let me just change this. It should say at most three, so three or less. And then finally it says at least six will purchase the water. This means six or more. So now we want six out of the seven people to purchase the water or more. So we're going to add six and seven to get our answers. So 7C6 times 0 0.09 to the six times 0 0.91 to the one. Well, that's a very small number. Whenever you have these small numbers, and if we look at seven, uh, probability that seven will purchase water, that's even smaller. We typically round to the third or fourth decimal place. So these can just be treated as zero. So the probability that at least six will purchase water is zero, basically zero. It's not really zero, but it's if we round it to four decimal places, it is zero. Um, so just be prepared to do both types of problems. Now the last topic in this section deals with the mean variance and standard deviation for the binomial distribution. Um, there are so if we know we're working with a binomial distribution, there are standard formulas that we will use to make these computations. So the mean of a binomial distribution is going to be used, we're using the Greek symbol mu. Anytime we work with the distribution, the mean is represented as mu, and that's n times p. n is the, um, the uh, that's going to be our sample size, and p is your probability of success. Variance. Sigma squared NPQ, st uh, standard deviation is sigma radical NPQ. So let's look at an example here. So let's say that the sum of coin is flipped 100 times, compute the mean variance and standard deviation. Well, the mean is 100 times the probability of getting tails is 0.5. So the mean, the average number of tails we would expect in 100 tosses is 50. The variance is 100 times 0.5 times 0.5 is 25. Finally, the standard deviation, you just take the square root of the variance is radical 25 is 5. So we have the mean, variance, and standard deviation. And there's a couple of problems for you to try. Um, and that's going to end the video. Thank you very much.